right, we are at open source. The mic is showing a CDU and reproducing 1202 errors. Ken, what are you up to? I'm reverse engineering this, this astronomical computer from the, from the B52. Yeah, a piece of cake for you. It's not that complicated, is it? Well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> a lot of little gears. Eric brought his Monster 6502, a replica of the 6502 microprocessor chip, complete with the pad out and it's the actual architecture, but made with real transistors instead of being an integrated circuit. I'm going to try to continue the repair of my HP oscilloscope and it just failed further. So, so the main frame is repaired. I just repaired that one. And that one was giving me trouble not sinking on B but sinking on A but now even if I put it on A and if I do internal syncing it won't trigger. I pipe the signal straight into the unit without going through this one and I go to external trigger, trigger external and it triggers. So the, the problem is how this one pipes the signal to this one now ready to debug the thing because I bought for the second time the operating and service manual because the one I had before was for units 1430 and this one is for unit 966 and 969 and our unit is just in the middle it's a 12 1220A, but 1220A is the same, it just has change number two, which is a super small change, it's a few components. So finally, I should get the correct board somewhere. Yes, there it is. So it's almost my board. It's this board here right there and it doesn't quite match because it's upside down and also because my board has an option so this is the actual version of this to here so it finally matches and we have the matching schematics and I can now see that I have the three signals coming from the channels and channel amplifiers which I know work because I see the signal and they are all combined here so you can sync on a b or combined and there's a little bit of amplification going on and then it's passed on to the next stage and since my ch channel amplifiers work i bet you have a fault somewhere here and actually i think i can already spot the three inputs yeah right there one, two, three. So I'll see if I have the signal here and I bet I'll get no signal at the output. So here are the first results. Uh, I do have an output signal, which I wasn't expecting, but it just goes all over the place. It goes up and down. And then if I do A, uh, where I'm on, oh, I'm on alternate. Here's A, B, A, B, so it's switching correctly. So this thing is apparently working. I'm surprised. So another interesting piece of information. Sometimes it's stable, but when it's unstable, the two traces go at the same time up and down. So it's something that's common to both A and B amplifiers. It's really weird. And the fans are helping me debug the scope and I think just pointing me in the right direction. I tested my amplifiers up to here. I could finally tell that this is all good. So it must happen here. And the first thing I see after the two channels are recombined is the famous A plus B balance. And it's a pot that used to be in the front but now it's on the board. I bet you that got scratchy. Oh. I have this inkling that it will fix it right now, which is why I got the camera. There's no pattern. It just moves by itself. Yeah, but just get here with the screwdriver and watch. No change. No, it moves. Yeah, but it's the magnitude. It's not. There's no offset. 
How much of that have you probed already? No, none of it. Oh, okay. I, I see nothing that should cause the ZCR cell. Well, so that's... Except if... So it would be like, like one half failing and the other half not exactly, failing, right? Exactly, exactly. That's what that's telling you. One half So I, what right. I have to do... Well, that's why the balance made sense. because Right. So what I have to do... So I have to check so five. And... So I am here with my next customer and I have moved on to the common part of the amplifier. I am right now on these two branches and I, I expected one of the branches to be bad and the other to stay but they both move at the same time. So at least we have a fault, right? It's off the screen on the... But it's it's a fold that's on... It's a common gain fold. And it's happening fairly soon here. So, ah, new piece of information. So, it's already bad here. And it's good here. So, it's here. It's right there. And that's something that comes to both stages. But what can it possibly be? What the heck? What could cause the game to change on both channels at the same time? Well, thank you, visitor. Of course. Thank you. That was entertaining and helpful. So with the help of my next customer here, right, we are continuing debugging this thing, and I think we found a smoking room. So I... I uh, was wondering how come it is that we have something that affects yeah, both planes at the same time and I check power supplies, they are fine, and that wouldn't affect, that wouldn't balance them. So I just purposely yeah. imbalanced them. I, mean, you... I could see that it's imbalanced a bit this way. It's 12 volts versus 7 volts and should be around 10. Here it was 4 volts versus 5 volts and it should be around 4, no, 3.8. And then when I came back here, then that starts to be telling because I have, if I put them to scale, the blue one is the top line is at 4.0 volts and the minus one is at minus 1.2. And they are supposed to be, and the one minus 1.2 is the correct one. According to HP, you can thankfully give us the stuff. Now, finally, we have a big back fault, which is a 5 volt. So, what I think is happening is that this side of, didn't work at all of the amplifier, but then it gets influenced by this one, and somehow we get the uh, other side of the differential pair driving its cousin that should be driven, that is totally, or should be uh, on all the time. That's why I see this weird coupling that I didn't expect to be two sides, but actually only one side is dead. So finally the thing starts to make sense. So why is it dead? Is it dead because this is dead? Or is this dead because it's coming from there? So I have to go back to the previous page, which I have failed it. But you have to stay around to help me. I do. <laughs> and I'm excited to. Alright. I'm super happy that we have one side that's known bad. So I was like, how can both sides be bad? Right. I tested it up to up to here. I don't think I ever tested it up to after the diodes. So it could be one of the diodes that that's biasing it all along. So that comes all the way from here, but it's it's a little switcher, so it's the Oh, so it's a delay line. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. To delay line. So. Huh, huh. So our signal 
goes into this weird thing, which is a delay line. Oh, that's this here then, huh? Which I think is 150 nanoseconds. Mm. And that's so that the trigger circuit has time to activate. Right. And you can still see your signal. Before, yeah. Right. So, or you would miss the beginning of your signal. Right. So that's the delay. So we have a problem. Oh, that could be bad. If we have a delay line fault, then we are in trouble. Yeah, like, what is the construction of the delay line? Uh, looks mysterious. Looks like a like a roll sandwich to me. I know. Yeah, I'm used to like big coaxial like delay lines just wrapped up together, but this well, is like a film is, almost. Yeah, this is the film, and it's fragile, and this is I expose, so it could have been broken. That would be very annoying. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's something more prosaic. So we can. But it's just a line, right? So if I test it here, and I still find the imbalance, then I'll be relatively happy. If I don't find the imbalance here, I'll be very, very sad. It means it's going to be the de delay line. And then I can't repair it at the show. <laughs> yeah. Right, so it turns out it's predictably the beginning of the delay line which comes here through those wires and goes to the delay line so we are right here right now and we will know pretty soon get ready it's amazing that we can do computations in a smaller package mechanically before we could do it oh. Big oof. We see oof. 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 Yeah. Visitor is going to film for us. Hello. And we found the problem. So the delay line comes out here and comes back in there. So if I test the two greens, do you have enough light? This one is good. Then we go white to white. It's not beeping. Oh, it's tragic. It's tragic. Absolutely tragic. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, I'm going to do the atomic clock instead. <laughs> Eric, we, we found the fault. Excellent. No, it's not excellent. No? Guess where it was. Yeah. Uh, in the tube. Give me a, a guess at the worst where it could be. In the, in the CRT tube itself? No, it's in the delay line. Oh, no. We have a break in the delay line and we are so... The delay line comes out here, comes back there, and the white is not connected to the white. And it imbalances the whole chain down the thing. Is there a break in there that's I, 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 opening I, and closing? I think so. I think that's why it was just flickering. Uh, so here's the unit and here's the delay line. And to get it out is not... I understand, you know, how you can get it. Impossibly difficult. You have to take the whole envelope and all the whole screws out. Yeah, I admire that, yeah. But that's not something I want to do at a convention here. Uh, so this goes back into the lab and we do it on a clean bench. Yeah, it's repaired. Actually, it's not. I just put another plug in. And, and this one is the 75 megahertz model. So it's, it's a... And anyhow, the, this one needs work on the input attenuators, but this it's a hybrid ceramic thing, so I cannot do it at the show. But anyhow, we'll call it good for now and have it on display and work on the atomic clock. By the way, you might have been wondering, what is this weird screen? It's a dual time base and delay. So it's your usual time base where you have the regular time base and then you have a portion in the middle that you can blow up and you have the regular display and you have the display where it's all blown up and then you can choose which section you look at it has this weird hybrid display where it starts with one time base and it switches to the other one and you can choose with a button where the where the start is <laughs> it, it looks like you're unfurling your sinusoid 
and there's even a f more fun mode where you also trigger the second one and now it does it but by whole steps I tell you those analog tracks We'll continue on today and uh, I'll do some more repairs, probably atomic clock and Ken is working on reverse engineering stuff and Mike is generating 1202s. Come and see us at Open Source.